Good evening to everyone. We want to thank you so much for joining us for Bible study on tonight. Our scripture tonight will come from Psalm 69, verse 30. Psalm 69, verse number 30. And it says, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Our song tonight is simply, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, because you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity. God, we honor you tonight. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for who you are and for what you do. God, we thank you, Father God, for just being good and being God. We thank you, Father, for bringing us from a mighty long way. Not only that, Father God, you brought us all the way, and for that we are thankful. Lord, we ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for messing up, Forgive us for falling short, Father God. Lord, we've missed the mark. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. We ask you to bless us on tonight. Bless us, Father God, that your word, Father God, will be rich to us, that your word, Father God, will be the word that we can tell a dying world about the Jesus that we serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me as you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Hallelujah. Mighty long way. 
brought you. Now you thought you got here all by yourself. He has brought us from a mighty, mighty long ways. Not only did he bring us from a mighty long ways, he has brought us all the way. And we ought to thank him for just bringing us. Amen. Anybody thankful tonight? Anybody thankful that he has brought you? Ooh, if you live in Houston and you drive in traffic, you better thank him. Ah, if you live in Houston and you drive in traffic, you better thank him for bringing you. He kept you. It's not because of your signal light work. <laughs> it's because he kept you. He brought you from a mighty, a mighty long way. Amen. We in Proverbs chapter 3 tonight. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. We'll be in verses 11 through 15. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 11 through 16 is where we are on tonight. We've been talking about the ultimate decision, making decisions that are wise decisions. Tonight we're going to dig further into looking at the fact that we have to make wise decisions, not leaning to our own understanding, but trusting in the Lord. Amen. We talked about wisdom. Wisdom is that skill that God gives us to uh, do the right thing. It is that discernment God gives us to act the right way. Knowledge is good, but how to operate with that knowledge, it takes wisdom. It takes wisdom. The writer is talking to his son again. He started off talking to his son. Now he continues to talk to his son in verse number 11. He brings out a few, just a few points, and then we'll leave you alone. He says, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. He says to us, whatever we do, don't despise the chastising or the chastening of the Lord. The God we serve is a merciful God. He is a merciful God. That means the bad that we deserve, he doesn't give it to us. He is a merciful God. Anybody deserve bad right now and God has held off justice? We oftentimes look at the TV and we see family members asking for justice. We want justice. We want justice. Let me tell you, I don't want justice. I want mercy. Because if justice would have his way, I would not be here tonight. If justice would have his way, you won't be here tonight. So I don't want justice. Lord, withhold justice from me. Give me mercy. Give me mercy because I'm messed up. I keep messing up. I keep doing the same old mess up. Anybody does the same old mess up? Same old messed up. There was, a, there was a carpenter one day. He would go out and he would look to hit a nail and hit his thumb. Went out the next day with that bandage on his thumb. Now the bandage reminds him not to hit his thumb. Guess what he does? He hit the same thumb. He kept messing up, kept messing up, kept messing up, hitting the same thumb, and that's what people do. We make the same commitments and ignore God over and over and over again. It's the same thumb. I told you about, about softball days and, and uh, in the church league. I was lead off batter, so I was there too, babe, right? I was the lead off batter in the church league, in the church league. I'm in a church league. I go down first. I hit a hit a hit a a single and stretches it to a double. Go down there and hit second base. Bam! Twist my ankle. Forgot the base was stationary. Thirty-seven years old. Couldn't blame it on old age, could I? Went down that second base and hit that leg and twisted my ankle. But I had to make it home, right? So I had to stay out there. You know, I had, I had some things that I need to prove. So I stayed out there. The inning was over. Made it into home. The inning's over. And I'm the leadoff batter again. Third inning. That was the first inning when I, I messed up the first time. I'm still hobbling on that same ankle. Third inning, I'm the leadoff batter again. Go down there, stretch my single to a double. That's when I had real blazing speed, brother. But I had brave blazing speed. I could stretch a single to a double. And guess what I did, Sister Brown? Hit second base, head on again. That base didn't move. Bam, twist the same ankle, same place, over and over again. 
That time I couldn't make it to the third inning it was over. I had to call for a run. That's what we do. We make the same sins over and over and over again, the same mistakes over and over again. And if God was to give us justice, we would have been wiped out a long time ago. So God, don't give me justice. Give me mercy. Mercy suits the case. He says, my son, do not despise the chastening or the chastising, the chastening of the Lord. Do not reject it. Do not, this word chastening mean the discipline. Do not reject the discipline of the Lord. Don't reject it. Welcome it. How many of you enjoy whippings? Can't ask that question in the 21st century. Children these days don't get whippings. They don't even get time out anymore. They just run rampant and do whatever they want to do. Say what they want to say. Act any way they want to act. Do whatever they want to do. In my day, there was some chastising. There was some chastening. There was some chastening. And I, I understood why they call it chastening now. Because when they got through, you were chased. <laughs> Somebody older than 40 get that on the way home. When they got through, you were chased. You were messed up. You, didn't, you did not try that again. So he says to us, even though we have a loving God, even though we have a God that looks out for us, there's another side of this loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. But there's another side of God, and that's the God that has a wrath. Says, my son, do not despise the chastening or the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. Don't reject it. Don't act like it's only you being chastised. It's not only you. It's, it's all of us. He says, don't, don't reject it. And in other words, look forward to it. Sometimes I would do some things and daddy would come home. I thought he was going to come in the door chest us. I thought about it all day long, all night long. Because I knew he was going to get me sooner or later. But guess what? Sometimes they get you right at the point that you've forgotten about what you've done. And he was saying statements like this, I'm going to get you for old and I'm going to get you for new. And when they chastise you and when they discipline you, they, they start counting up, counting up what you have done. We sing the song, Count My Blessed, naming them one by one. Don't, don't allow God to count them up and add them up. When you know you're wrong, expect to be chastised. Don't reject it, expect it. Look forward to it. I'm telling you, I never looked to, look forward to one of them. It says, look forward to it. And then he says, do not detest his corrections. Whatever you do, don't reject his, his discipline. Don't detest. It's, this word detest means to grow weary. Don't get weary in God correcting you. I could be talking to my daughter sometime and I can tell by her voice, she's just sick and tired of hearing this. I can, I can hear in her voice that uh, I'm just being manable. I, I'm just waiting till you get through. I can tell when she said, okay, yes, sir. I can tell, so this is what like she's just waiting till I finish. It says, do not detest, don't grow weary. And you know, some parents can just wear you down. Just wear you down. Don't grow weary in God correcting you. Don't get to a point where you wish God would leave you alone. Because it's dangerous. It's dangerous when God leaves you alone. Romans chapter 1 says that when God takes his hand off you, he turns you over to a reprobate mind. It says, go on, do what you want to do. Back home, they would say, go on, go on then. Means I'm through with you. It says, whatever you do, 
Do not get weary in being corrected, being rebuked, being reproved by the Lord. Don't get weary in it. Expect it. Because God loves you. Verse number 12 says, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects. If he doesn't love you, he doesn't correct you. If he see you going the wrong way and he doesn't say anything, that's when you ought to get concerned. When parents stop talking to children, that's when children ought to get concerned. When God stops speaking to us, when God stops correcting us, when God stops disciplining us, we ought to be concerned. That means there's a great chasm between us and God. God is not concerned about talking to you because you weren't concerned about talking to God. And when God turns you over, he turns you over at the time that you need him the most. When you look at chapter 15 of Luke, Luke chapter 15, there's a boy who leaves home. Daddy gives him all that belongs to him. He leaves home, and when he leaves home, this boy spends all his daddy has given to him in riotous living. His brother said he was hanging out with the women. Now, the brother wasn't there, but the brother concluded he was hanging out with women and lost everything his daddy had given him. And because he lost everything, the famine hit right around the same time he lost everything. When it rains, it pours. It wasn't until the famine hit that he found himself with no more friends. He used to call set up. Hey, bartender, bring me a set up. Y'all do know what set ups are. I know y'all Christian folk, but y'all do know what set ups. So Brown, you know what set up is? Oh, she ain't been that way all her life. <laughs> she just looked holy today. She, she, had, she hadn't been the holy all her life, you know. See, he would cost us, David. You know what setup is? Lord have mercy. Setup, he would call setups. He would call setups for everybody. Bring them over here, party over here, party over there. And it wasn't until he had spent all, he found himself in a hog pen or a hog field after he got rid of everything lost his honor cards lost his apartment lost his friends lost his money lost his food he was messed up but he was still his daddy's child he still had a relationship with his daddy but the world was whipping him and beating him up the world was mistreating him because he had mistreated what God had entrusted in him. That's why I always remind us, make sure we do well with God resources. Let's make sure we handle God's resources well. Even our bodies, our minds, our hearts, let's handle God's resources well. Whatever God has blessed you with, your health, handle it well. Your strength, handle it well. Your ideals, handle it well. Whatever you do, make sure that you get to the point where you understand God is correcting you because he loves you. This word love is a friendly type of love. I'm a friend of God, hallelujah. God is my friend, hallelujah. I am a friend of God. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. Whom the Lord loves, he treats them as a friend. If you got a friend that lets you do anything wrong and don't, don't say anything, your friend doesn't say anything, you, got, you don't have a friend. You have a dog, you have a road buddy, you got somebody that just like hanging out with you. And they say they're going to be there through thick and thin, but as soon as the thick get thin, they get gone. It's a friendly type of love where God becomes man's friend. And we have to become a friend of God. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Whom the Lord loves, he, he disciplines. Whom the Lord 
love, he corrects them. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights, God corrects. The son in whom he delights, God corrects us because he loves us. He delights in us. He is well pleased with us. He enjoys our presence so much so till he pardons us. He pardons us. Anybody need a pardon? <laughs> Bunch of congressmen need pardons right right now. But I'm afraid they probably not walking with the Lord. When you walk with the Lord, he pardons you. When you walk with the Lord, he's pleased with you. He delights in you. Jesus got baptized. John took him all the way under water, brought him all the way back up. Jesus gets baptized. This Holy Spirit descends upon him as a dove. The, the Lord, the Father, God himself speaks from heaven and says, this is my, my beloved son and whom I delight and whom I'm well pleased. Can God say that about you? Is God well pleased with you? Is God well pleased with your action? Is God delighting in you? Is God a part of your thoughts? Is God a part of your actions? Is God a part of your discipline? Is God a part of your misery? Because the God we serve, he walks with us in the midst of our misery. When life has had its way with us, when life has beaten us down, Paul says in Romans 7, he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this sinful death? Paul talks about a war that's going on in him and, and, and it's overshadowing his spiritual man. It is the picture of when they killed a person, they would tie the dead, the dead person onto the live person's body until the bacteria from the dead man eats up the live man. You kill somebody, they tie that person on your back. You go to eat, you eat with him on your back. You go to the restroom, you, you shower with him on your back. You go to a public place, you got him on your back. Now guys got tear drops under their eyes to say I killed somebody. You didn't have to tell them you killed anybody because you had a man that you killed riding your back. So the bacteria from the dead man will eventually eat up the body of the living man. Because he's riding your back. He's, he's tied onto you and you can't get him off. Don't let my dear feel you, fool you, think you can cut your, 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 your bracelet off. You couldn't take this man, you couldn't cut him off. That man became, the dead man became a part of and was intertwined into the live man's body. And guess what, there was no embalming. So there was a stench. That's what sin does to us. It's a stench in the, in the nostrils of God. God loves us. He delights in us. He wants to be a part of our lives. God loves us so much until he wants to befriend us. He has befriended us. He loves us so much until once we are saved, once we are born again, he keeps right on loving us. And the good news is, even if we're not born again, he loves us so much until he says, come unto me and let's reason together. You see, we're at odds with God. In our sinful lives, we're at odds with God. We, we don't agree with God and God doesn't agree with us. Until we come to God and say, God, I'm wrong and you're right. He's going to continue to correct us. He's going to continue to love us. We have to love people to God. You can't talk about them to get to God. You can't brag about how holy you are to get them, get, get, get them to God. You have to love them. People will know that you are Jesus' disciples by your love. God delights in us. He loves us. He chastises us. How many of you grew up when you're about to get a whipping? Uh, whoever was doing the whipping says it's going to hurt, hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Oh, y'all didn't get whippings in the city, huh? 
the, the, the worst thing we did when we moved to Sunflower County, Indianola, Mississippi, the worst thing mama did, I mean, this is the worst thing she did, was put a weeping willow tree in the backyard. Know what a weeping willow tree is? It has those long switches. And when they get you, they, they, it's like a whip. They hit you and it wraps all the way around you and they snatch it. Y'all knew there was child abuse, didn't you? If it was child abuse and we knew it was child abuse, we shouldn't do what we did, right? So God corrects us. Just as a father corrects his son or his daughter in whom he delights and whom he's well pleased and whom he's proud of. It's an oxymoron to me. This gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. Not with you hitting me and I'm the one feeling it. What they're saying is I love you so much until I really hate to do it, but because I love you, I got to do it. Am I the only one in this house that, that experienced that? Anybody else? Anybody else in the room that, that had that kind of experience? Am, am I making this stuff up? It's going to hurt me more than hurt you. I love you so much, I just got to give it to you. And the way daddy did, he laid you on the floor and called all your friends in the house. He, he said, "Get up, lay on the floor so you can't suck it in. Lay on the floor. Then he called all our friends in the house. Not only did he put fear in us, he put fear in our friends. <laughs> and he said, you better be clowning about Mr. Davis. He's going to get it. So he loves us. He delights in us. Any questions or comments? Verse number 13. Questions or comments? Anybody? Verse number 13. Happy is the man that finds wisdom. Happy. Wisdom brings happiness. Not only does wisdom bring happiness, it also brings understanding. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Happy, happy means blessed. I mean, when you are happy, you are blessed. When you are blessed, you are happy. Are we blessed just because we get what we want? Is that when we're blessed? Are we blessed just because we get our prayers answered? We're a church, right? We're a church. We're Christians. We're Christians. We live for Christ and we walk with Christ. And when we pray, the Bible said God is going to answer us. It says that we can pray and ask God for whatever we will and he will give it to us. How many people hadn't received it yet? How many people still waiting on it? Lord, what did I do? How can I correct? Lord, why am I in this situation? But you're still blessed. You are still happy is the man who finds wisdom. We ought to be happy in the fact that God has given us the skill to know how to handle our situations. God has given us the skill. This wisdom is a skill that God has given us to know how to handle things, to know how to do things, know how to stay out of trouble. We tell children, you get pulled over by a police officer, put your hand where he can see it. I used to say, put it on the steering wheel. Now you're hanging out the window. And when you're hanging out the window, you shake them like this so, so they know you don't have anything in them. You got the light on in the middle of the day. You got to be wise. You have to make it home alive. Don't prove your point on the side of the road. Have your day in court. It may be six years from now, but have your day in court. Don't try to have a court case on the side of the road. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. I'm just trying to make it home. If I can make it home, I can live another day and I can settle the case then. Oh, if our children would just get it. <laughs> if they could just zip it. If they could just operate in wisdom, wouldn't be so many graves. It wouldn't, wouldn't be so many beatings. Wouldn't be so many. I know some guys show up in the morning with attitude. I understand. Some guys, some women, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do anyway. I understand. But it's your job to de-escalate. Now, it's supposed to be their job. 
but it's really your job to de-escalate. You can't prove anything on the side of the road. You need to operate in wisdom. Put your flashes on, pull to a light lighted place, you're having wisdom. Whatever you do, operate, use the skill that God has given you. As you are blessed, operate in wisdom. You bless with wisdom. You, you have wisdom. The Bible says in, in, in the first three books of Proverbs, chapters of Proverbs, it says that wisdom, first eight chapter says that wisdom is, is crying in the street, trying to run us down, saying, hey, I want to be a part of your life. Say, wait, don't do that. I want to be, I want to offer you some help. I want to give you some advice. I want to counsel you through this. Wisdom is running in the street. So wait a minute, come back. Don't go that way. Oftentimes to give the analogy, I'm riding down Highway 610, I'm riding around the loop. 610, I'm riding down the loop, and all of a sudden the, the, the highway just gives away. It just drops, it's, it's no longer there. I, rock, I ride off the curb, I ride off the cliff. It becomes my responsibility to stand in the middle of the road in 610, wave my hand, say, hey, don't go that way. There's a hole in the road. Don't go that way. There's a hole in the road. Wisdom is standing in the street saying, hey, don't go that way. That, that way leads to death. That way leads to destruction. You got to have wisdom. You got to be wise. There are a bunch of educated fools. There are a bunch of folk that has degrees that, that just can't think. There are a bunch of people that got a lot of degrees, a lot of education. Some of them have spent 50, 60, $80,000 for their degrees. And guess what? They have no more sense than the person that got a third grade education because they don't operate in wisdom. They don't operate in wisdom. Oftentimes, look at grandmom and granddaddy and big mom and big daddy, and they never lost their house. They never made $20,000 in their whole life. They never made $20,000. They never had a third grade education, but they never lost a house, never lost a car. And when they went to the bank, the folk welcomed them in. Now we got folk make $250,000 a year and can't keep a house. There are people that, that has an income of over 500000 and what they do is they get more to please themselves instead of just operating their wisdom. They get more to please other people. I told you before, the guy that bought those rims, well, those rims were popular. I was sitting at the red light one day, and the first time I saw it, it looked good. See, we had the basket rims. When I grew up, there, it was a basket rim. You take them off, you clean them, you shine them back up. And, and when you roll in the basket rims, roll as the cars roll. But one day I was sitting at the light, and brother, the guy pulled up in these rims. And when the car stopped, the rims, they kept rolling. I said, look at that guy that bought some rims for me to look at. Brother Whitlock, like I said, he has brought some, he has bought me some rims so I can admire them. I have never made paid twelve hundred dollars for for some rims. Boy, when that guy pulled up, all four rims just kept rolling. I said, "Look, he has bought me some rims so I can admire." I know he bought them for me, Sister Woods, because he couldn't see him. Every time he stopped, he couldn't see him, so he bought them for me. That's not wisdom. We have to operate in wisdom. We have to make sure we make decisions that will lead to lifelong prosperity. And the man who gains understanding, happy, blessed is the man who gains understanding. If you have intelligence, this word understanding is intelligence. You gotta just think. Do you know somebody that just can't think now? I mean, they, they just can't think. And now AI is going to start thinking for us. The other day, a guy spoke through his phone and said, AI, write me a paper on this subject. It wrote the whole paper for him. 
the whole whole assignment. 20 pages in a matter of two seconds. But what students don't understand is that the professor has AI too. And it doesn't take much. You don't even have to put it in AI to know that you copied it. <laughs> to know it's somebody else's work. Guy said, give me a resume that shows that I'm an industrial engineer. <laughs> Done. They don't have to think. So when you put them under pressure, they can't think. When you ask them a simple question, it's like, what you say now, huh? What you want me to do? But because of understanding, understanding the word, understanding who God is, make sure we exercise our brains for the Lord. If there's no exercise of your brain, you will not think. I often wonder how all these dictators really make it. They got people to, to bathe them. They got people to walk and get things for them. And they got people that, that serve them and they don't have to put forth any muscles at all. They don't have to do anything. Sooner or later, everything just kind of shuts down. Any muscle you don't use, it dies off. You gotta know how to think. So even the, the Proverbs writer, the wise writer says that wisdom caused happiness and happy is the man or the woman, the boy or girl who has the skill to think intelligently. Just think, just think. If we could get young and old people to think before they do, to think before they put their mouths in gear, then life would be better. You don't have to go toe to toe with the authorities. Just think, you, you have a supervisor and your supervisor says, this is the way it's gonna be. And you're gonna tell him or her, no, it's gonna be this way. What you need to think is I got three young folk at the house that's depending on the finances that I bring from this job and if I don't do the right thing or say the right thing, it's the conclusion that I came through very, oh, I don't own anything here anyway. <laughs> Since I don't own anything, I just do what they tell me to do. And if I do what they tell me to do, they keep me around. It kind of works, right? Walmart and Home Depot and several others have told their employees, when somebody's stealing something, leave them alone, don't, go, don't run after them. And so two of them were, were shocked when they got fired because they tried to stop people from taking stuff. Matter of fact, you can't stop folk from taking stuff. It's like a wife, she can't stop a husband, a husband can't stop a wife. I mean, what do I look like walk, running behind, looking in the head, just hot, looking and watching what sister David, I ain't got that kind of time. You can't stop, it sure ain't that important. You can't stop people from taking what they, they were designed to take. They came there with the mind to take it. Operate with wisdom and think through it. Verse number 14. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain better than fine. Go. Better her proceeds, her, her merchandise. Her, her proceeds, whose proceeds? Wisdoms. Her proceeds are better than the profits of silver. It's better than the, the merchandise that you can get from silver. It's better than the money that you can turn over for silver. I got these old coins that the mama gave me and said, oh, you take to the city, city of Houston, you probably get a lot of money for it. She gave me these coins and I called down there and I started telling them the dates on the coin and he was telling me for a quarter, we may give you $2.50. I said, no, I keep my coins. Because he didn't value the silver. He didn't value it, but let me tell you, there are some people who have silver that is of great value. The merchandise is good. And if it's worth 250 for him, to him, to give to me, then it's worth 250 for me to keep it. 
Yes? Always think you are valuable. If I took a $20 bill, bought it up, and, and, and crinkled it, it's still a $20 bill. If I took a $20 bill and put it on the floor and rubbed and got some dirt in it, it's still a $20 bill. It still holds its value. The other day, a man asked, asked a girl, he said, you know, he said, well, do you leave, do you, do you leave your, your car unlocked? She said, no. Well, do you, do you leave your purse sitting out where somebody can take it? She says, no. Do you leave your money where somebody can get it? No, I keep it in the purse. He says, well, you cover up valuable things, right? Then he asked her, why you ain't got on no clothes? <laughs> that which is valuable ought to be covered. That which is expensive, you can't just run out the door and get it. If you're going to find rubies, and that's what the last two verses talk about, if you're going to find rubies, you're going to find pearls, you got to go to the sea, dig deep down, go under the water, dig into the dirt, and go and pull it out of the crab's mouth and pull the pearl. When you got something valuable, it just don't lay on top of the table. It just doesn't roll up the driveway to you. When it's valuable, it's covered. What have I just said? When it's valuable, it's covered. What, what does that mean? If it's valuable, it's covered. Doesn't mean anything. I'm just talking tonight. Anybody? Does that mean anything? If it's valuable, it's covered. If it's valuable, you have to sacrifice for it. Why are you thinking in my day, men rap? Okay, everybody know what a rap is, right? And I'm not talking about boop, 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 boop. Anybody know what a rap is? Brother Miles, tell us, educate us on what a rap is. Tell us what you did, Brother Miles. Come on, tell me. <laughs> tell me what a rap is. Yeah, the other guy. Tell me what they did. <laughs> yeah, so they, they were rapping. What? <laughs> and they didn't have lame lines like, hey, girl, where you headed, wherever you going, I want to go. That's a lame line there. Which one of you brothers want to tell me what, what rap you use? Anybody? Well, come on, all 20 of y'all, tell me what rap y'all use. Just give, me a, just give me one line. Anybody? What's your sign? They start singing, float, float on. My name is Larry and I'm a Capricorn. I love everybody and everything. So was, uh, either they put on the music, right? Come on. Okay, so I get it. Brother Whitlock, you didn't have to rap. She rapped to you. What was her line, Brother Whitlock, when she rolled up on you, man? What did she say? <laughs> the conversation was great. All right, then. That's a safety man there. He's a, <laughs> he's a safety. He's a, he's a defensive safety. So what, what we have to understand is, what, yes. <laughs> my, my, my. She's going to make me say it. Guess what? 25 years later, she's sitting here. It was pretty, it was pretty good, wasn't it? Wasn't it, brother? That was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> She's getting ready to go home in Mississippi, right? She told me that I had three strikes against me. She told me, had the nerve, the audacity, the gall to call me out. For 900 miles, when I got through rapping, she, had, she was thinking about it for 900 miles. And on her way back, 900 more. As I said, one thing that you have to understand. Now, I'm poor. I'm broke, I'm homeless. I am poor, broke, and homeless. Didn't have a house, and she had one. 
Internet had just come out big time, and I began to look up the house to see who really owned the house. I looked up the car to see who really owned the car. I looked up the address to see how long she'd been at the address. And then I discovered all the things lined up. I made my approach. And when I made my approach, she said, you got three strikes against you. Mm-hmm. So, well, one thing you got to know, that even with these three, three strikes, I'm better than any man you will ever meet. And then I told her why. I said, because I am God's favorite. I am God's favorite. I walk in faith. And because I'm God's favorite and I walk in faith and God has favored me, I have favor with him. Those three things right there makes me the best man. Not that I'm better than anybody else. It's those three things that makes me better. And all the way home, and all the way back home, she's like, that, that dude, and, and then I was about 30 pounds lighter too. <laughs> all the way home, and all the way back, she was like, oh, I was thinking about that thing. I ain't never heard anybody intelligent enough to put a line together like that. One year later, one year later, Nearly to the date, one year later, now she asked for it, right? She pledged for better and for worse. And sick, she pledged and sickness and in health. She pledged for from now on to death do us part. And that's why she wanted me to tell y'all. That's after she had chased me so long. Wisdom, she was operating in wisdom. See, because now women don't, women don't wait on men to talk. They walk up to you and say, hey, what's your sign? You need to say Christianity. In her game, is better than fine gold. Her game is better than fine gold. Her profit, her benefits, not hers, but wisdom's benefit is better than fine gold. It will benefit you greatly if you get wisdom. You will gain great things if you do wisdom. If you just think about, pray about wisdom. There are three things that I know of. You may know more. There are three things that I know of the way three ways you can get wisdom the bible says if a man lacks wisdom first of all he need to ask it of god if you lack wisdom you need to ask the god who sits high and looks low you need to ask god to give you wisdom god give me wisdom in every situation ask god for wisdom the other way the other way is what we're doing tonight Study God's word. Proverbs has 31 chapters. One chapter for every day of the month. Study Proverbs. We need to get our youth involved in studying Proverbs every day of the week. And then when you have those months that do not have 31 days, you double up on the last two days. And then you read Proverbs in, in January. Then you read Proverbs in April. You read Proverbs all the way to December and start over again. It gives you wisdom. So the first way is to ask of God. The second way is to read Proverbs and the word of God. And the third way is hang around somebody that got wisdom. I used to sit as a teenager in a preteen under a tree with a 78 year old man and an 80 year old woman, just soaking up what they had to say. So what are the three ways that you can gain wisdom? Number one, ask God for it. Ask it of God. Number two, study God's word, specifically, more specifically, the book of Proverbs. It is the book of wisdom. What's the third way? Hang around with folk with wisdom. Now, just because folk are old doesn't mean they have wisdom. 
just because people have age doesn't mean they have wisdom. But when you look at people's lives, the question becomes, do you want to end up like they've ended up? If you make the same decisions that they have made, you will end up the same way. You have to be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. You have to be willing to do today what others will not do in order to have tomorrow what others will not have. You gotta be willing today to make the sacrifice. Be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. You've seen it in your life. You've seen it in the lives of your family members. You've seen it in the lives of other people. Be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. Make the sacrifice. Be wise about it. Finally, verse number 15. She is more precious than rubies. Who is she? Wisdom. She is more precious than rubies. The word precious means costly. The word precious means valuable. The word precious means honorable. She is more valuable. She is more costly. She is more honorable than rubies. The pearls that I talked about. How you make sacrifices to get that which is expensive. How many of you have heard of a high maintenance person? Use the word person. <laughs> you have, have you ever heard of high maintenance? What does high maintenance mean? Expensive? Got to do a lot to keep them. Anybody else? High maintenance. What does it mean to be high maintenance? Great sacrifice, right? That's why the songwriter says, says that it's cheaper to keep her. It means you're gonna get more, get rid of more when you get rid of them than you do just to stay there and put up with them. I mean, just stay there. <laughs> Are you with me? High maintenance. High maintenance means, means that she is honorable, she's valuable, she is costly. It's going to cost you to even walk down the street. People praying, when they get up my age, they start praying, God, give me somebody that I can walk down the street and hold hands with. That's all you want. That, that's all you want God to do. He's a big God. He can do whatever he chooses to do. He is an awesome, amazing God. He can give you that which is honorable, that which is costly, that which is valuable. We need, to, we need to elevate our prayers. We need to, to level up our prayers. God, do something that I can't do. Because, you know, God wants us to participate in his blessing us. And because he wants us to participate, we got to do what we can do. And God can do what he can do. We ought to pray like it's all dependent on God. And we ought to work like it's all dependent on us. Pray as if it is all depending on God and work like it's all depending on you. Too many men don't want to work, but they want women who are valuable, women who are honorable, women who are costly. Expensive stuff costs. Expensive stuff has to, has to, to, it, it, it warns your attention. Expensive stuff calls you to do something that inexpensive stuff won't cost you to do. She is more precious than rubies. When you look at Proverbs 31, it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman, the virtuous woman. It talks about this woman being so precious. And let me just serve notice on the women right now. Proverbs 31 is not about a woman that doesn't have to work. Matter of fact, Proverbs 31 says this woman gets up early in the morning working. 
Proverbs 31 says this woman has worked in the streets and at home. Proverbs 31 says she, 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 she wove fine linen and she got a good reputation. And because she has a good reputation in the marketplace, when, when Mr. Proverbs 31 shows up, he got a good reputation, not because of him, but because of her. Whenever we go to any kind of musical concert, I walk to the door and they tell me how much it is. And then somebody that's sitting behind the person that's taking the money says, oh, that's Mr. Davis. That's Carolyn's husband. Oh, come on in. Man, I paid $45 to get this pass. And now I'm, I'm, I'm reaping it for the rest of my life. She'll tell you that it was her $45. But I'm not saying. <laughs> what you have to understand is, God opened doors through people. And the one that is costly is the one that can get the door open for you. See, I don't, I don't really have to be a millionaire. I just need 10 friends who are millionaires, 10 real friends. And if they're real friends, they're going to holler at the boy. They're going to throw me some, some. So when, when it says that, that she is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare to her. It says all the things that one will desire. The word desire means to yarn after. Gap Band had a song in 1980, 81. Gap Band says, I'm yearning for your love. I'm yearning. It means that I'm longing for it. It means I'm delighting in it. It means that I get pleasure from it. I mean, you remember that song, I'm yearning. You remember that song, Mr. Dave? Never mind. This, it, I'm yearning. I'm yearning for, for you. It says, whatever you yearn, for which you yearn, whatever you are, you, you have pleasure in. Whatever you desire, all these things that one desires cannot be compared. Cannot be compared. The word compare means it cannot be equal. New phrase out now is to level up. What does the level up mean? I mean, well, no, wait on somebody to tell me. What does level up mean? Level up. It can't be compared to it. It means what? You came up. So when you got married, you came up? Or when he got married, he came up? Oh, okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's see here. <laughs> the, the word compare means to, to level up, to, to be reckoned. It, it means... There is nothing that can counter it. I told you, I told you, if the president was to walk in this room, we all would stand up. But if Jesus showed up, we all would have to bow down because no man compares to him. No one levels up to him. No one is reckoned like him. There is nobody like Jesus. There's no one compared to him. The wise writer says there's nothing compared wisdom there is no thing nobody not anyone who compares to what Jesus has done for us on Calvary he died he was buried he rose for the whole entire world there's no more need for sacrifice there's no more need for any dog to be killed any scapegoats he became the scapegoat for us took all of our sins and carried them far away. But the good news is he rose from the dead and he did it for us. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you have not tried Jesus, this is your moment. Trust him. Believe the simple story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for our sins. 
he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you can trust this story tonight, you can be saved right here where you are. Would you bow your head with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life in this simple prayer? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, you're now born again and that you're on your way to heaven. You made a wise decision tonight. If you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, inbox us and let us know that you've received him. We want to rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, you need a church home, I welcome you to the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the center of attention. New Beginning Church, 4251 Shuremai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done, we serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. And since you all have been such great students this week, we'll have our Bible study online next week. So do find time. Since you've been such great students this week, find time next week at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday night to sit with your family members, sit with your food, and and attend Bible study online next week. Will you do that for me? There will be no choir rehearsal next week. There will be Bible study online next week. We're going to pray for all those who are traveling that you will make it safely to your destination. I want to remind you that this Sunday is the Pastor and Wife's Appreciation Sunday, 10.30 a.m., and 3 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you all. Looking forward to celebrating with you because God has given us 19 years of uninterrupted service unto him. 19 years. The Bible says that the very gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So God has blessed us and, and we want to celebrate what God has done. We want to celebrate Sister Davis' participation in ministry. And we want to celebrate the fellowship between the pastor and the pew. So please, ma'am, please, sir, come and be a part of a great celebration. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give unto the Lord. You can give electronically. If you want to give electronically by way of Zelle, you can give to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas 77459. If you're in the building and you want an envelope, please. Please allow this fella to give you an envelope and uh, raise your hand up real high if you want an envelope. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part of our service. Are there any praise reports or prayer requests? Praise reports or prayer requests. Our praise report for our Sister sister Paul's uh, son-in-law. He is, he is doing better. He's gone from critical to, from intensive care to a room. So we want to thank God for, for his healing power. We know him as the almighty God. 
Also this week, we're praying for Sister Ann Paul as, uh, as her son-in-law has moved from one stage to the other in the hospital. We want to pray for the bereavement of that family. Her nephew uh, passed away, so we want to lift that family before the Lord. Amen. Any other prayer requests or praise report? We're praying for Sister Darrington continually. She has started rehab, and that is a praise report. Amen. Thank God for who he is. I'm telling you, he's a great physician. He does whatever he chooses to do. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? Please continue to join us on Sunday morning for 9 a.m. service for a Sunday school and 1030 a.m. for worship. Thank you again for joining us here tonight. And please come back on the air next Wednesday night as we have Bible study. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you do. We bless your name, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us. Lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for keeping us in our right mind. Keep us focused on tonight. Bless the choirs they come to prepare songs unto you. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. I want to welcome our visitor, brother. Will you say hello to us? Tell us your name, and, and uh, we want to welcome you. All right, thank you, Damien, for coming to visit with us. Uh, that, that tall fellow over there gonna get your number. He's going to keep in touch with you. And then that short fellow right there is going to get your number. And then the shorter family fellow is going to get your number. We want to keep in touch with you. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.